Fast food workers and labor organizers gathered in protest Thursday at this Burger King in Charlotte. Organizers are calling this a national day of action, and similar protests have been planned in upwards of 100 cities across the country. I spoke with community organizers about the impact here in Charlotte. The significance of, of workers coming out today is that um, you know they form the backbone of our economy. Without the ability to uh, have disposable income, to reinvest in our communities, to reinvest in themselves, to send themselves to school, they're living paycheck to paycheck. And a lot of times, their wages are being subsidized by um, government programs like food stamps. Uh, so our tax dollars are being used to subsidize mega corporations um, instead of them simply paying their workers a livable wage. In a speech Wednesday night, President Obama again said that he would support a Senate measure to increase the federal minimum wage to $10.10. These workers are demanding more than double the current minimum wage of $7.25 and the right to form unions. We work too hard for this money. We work too hard to make these companies rich. We work too hard to make these companies rich today because I want to be the voice of the voiceless. There's so many employees who work for these companies who are afraid to talk because they're afraid of the action that might be taken against them. And I'm not afraid. You get paid by week, the taxes come out. So you're making roughly, if you're clearing that much, you're not even making but maybe $500 a month. I max out at 475 I can barely pay my cell phone bill half the time. Kids think, okay, you grow up, you do the necessary things, you go to school, you get a job. Okay, well, if I'm getting a job, then why are we still not making it? And that's like a question that a lot of uh, parents have been coming, that have to answer nowadays. Here in North Carolina, utilities are being raised, the rates are being raised, the water rates are being raised, gas prices have not gone down. How can $10.10 take care of anybody? It can't. It absolutely cannot. So we believe that $15 an hour will suffice and it will ensure that people will not have to be subsidized by the government. Some local leaders had sharp responses for those who feel that $15 an hour is too much. And it's well known in this country that if wages had kept up with the cost of living and inflation, the average person in this country would be making $22. When I say it's a known fact, it's a known fact by corporate leaders, by big businesses. They don't want to acknowledge it, they don't want to recognize it, so they can continue to complain and say, well, we don't make enough money, we're not getting enough money where they are. This is why you see the great disparity in terms of profit as opposed to wages. As a sociologist, we know that the minimum wage of $10 really relates to the statistics of about 1945. The crowd of about 60 protesters began to dwindle as drizzle turned into rain. I asked District 12 Congresswoman what she thought next steps would be in the push for higher wages. Establish a living wage, which would be like $15 an hour within the boundaries of the city. And that would cover not only fast food workers, but teaching assistants and anyone who has a who wants to work, and if they're going to keep moving forward, we have to know that unions doesn't mean a breakdown of companies, but a building up of communities and families. When we have unions in those strong states like New York, Wisconsin, Pittsburgh, communities are built up, we have strong middle class. And when we have a strong middle class, we have a strong America. Thanks for tuning in to CLTV. This is Kendria Mecca, as always, in these streets.